So when I'm thinking in English, I'm not really the Afrikaans part of my mind is sort of on pause. It's it's not. I'm not using it right now. So not only is it beneficial physically speaking, biologically speaking, but even beneficial for your emotional health. It does make your brain more healthy, complex, and actively engaged. Ah, oh, yeah, citizens of the world, welcome. This is Thiago from Real Life English, where our mission is to guide you beyond the classroom to live your English in real life, to help you speak confident, natural English, to connect to the world, and to actually use your English as the doorway to your greatest life. I'm joining the Global Studio today by the one and only, the most lacquer teacher in all South Africa, Kase. Hey, Kase. Hey, Thiago. Hey, guys. It's great to see you. It's great to have you on the podcast again. How have you been? I've been great. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be here. It's always good to, to be part of the podcast. So thank you for having me. That's great. <laughs> Any uh, news to share with us? How are the preparations going for moving and stuff? Uh, yeah. So, yes, uh, there have been some updates. I, I At first, I thought I was going to Shenzhen. Now I'm going to Nanjing which is a totally in a totally different part of China. And I'll be, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think it's like a totally different um, type of city as well. It's more traditional than Shenzhen, which is more like a, a tech city, I've heard, mm. like the, the Silicon Valley of China. Sounds exciting, though. Sounds exciting. Yeah. So, Kelsey, as you know, uh, today we're going to be discussing the benefits of being bilingual or speaking even more languages. Because, you know, speaking a second language, especially English, brings a lot of opportunities for you. That's obvious. We, we know that. It brings you better work opportunities. It brings you better study opportunities abroad. You get to travel freely without needing someone to translate things for you or be your... Uh, personal interpreter, that's great. But there are also health benefits to being bilingual or multilingual, and especially for your brain. So apparently, speaking two languages or more is beneficial for the health of your brain as well. So today, in this episode, we're going to be sharing some of the findings about that and what science has to say about these benefits. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell down below because every week we put out cool podcasts like this to help you go from feeling like a lost, insecure English learner to becoming a confident, natural English speaker. So hit that subscribe button and bell down below in order not to miss one single episode. Now, starting with the benefits of having a bilingual or multilingual brain. Uh, one thing that I learned, can I say, about this was that apparently there is a higher density of the gray matter that contains most of your brain's neurons and synapses. I know it sounds kind of scientific, but basically the, the gray matter is the area of your brain where most of your neurons and synapses are. And before we continue, can I say, I think it's nice to define these very quickly here because The words neurons and synapses are words that we know, we have heard about them. We know that they connect to the brain somehow, but I think that it can be confusing to explain what they actually do, yeah? So let me just briefly explain here in layman's terms what a neuron is and a synapse is. So basically, a neuron's job is to transmit information throughout your mind and your body. And in our brains, we have billions of neurons. Ba they basically make you who you are. You know, they make you move, they make you see, hear, even think about the world. So all that the neurons help us do. And a synapse is actually what connects the neurons, let's say, because uh, how do the neurons communicate with each other via the synapses? So the synapse passes messages from one neuron to the next. So this first benefit here is that apparently, if you learn a second or third language, you have a higher volume of this area of the brain that contains the neurons and the synapses. It's like a workout for your brain, yeah? You exercise your brain, your brain gets stronger the more languages you learn. It's interesting, right? It's so fascinating. It really is. Because if you think about it, like, 
it's the gray matter is this sort of outer layer. It, it's like this layer of your brain that, like you said, if you're going to the gym and you're working out your muscles, <laughs> that is the area <laughs> that you want to bulk up. And I would like to ask you to please define bulk up. What does mm. that mean to bulk up muscles, for bulk example? Up. <laughs> <laughs> bulk up. So when so bulking, like if you think about it in gym terms, means to you know add mass. You're increasing the volume of your muscles, or um, yeah, you're getting bigger. You want to b- become like a bigger, <laughs> tough guy. So if you think about it in terms of like your brain, or um, you know other bulking oh sorry <laughs> sorry but probably in this case we're talking about your brain or your muscles so it means to, to increase the volume of of that particular area of your body so getting bigger so that is one benefit that you can have by being bilingual or more multilingual now i can say are there mm-hmm. any other benefits to share today yeah there are actually very important benefits which i think we often overlook when we our kids or when we're younger and we are asked, you know, if we want to, you know, probably study a new language or take up the option for, because for a lot of us, it's an option. And for other people, of course, it's maybe a necessity. It's part of your school curriculum. But when we think about our, our old age, you know, being an elderly person, we don't think that learning a language has anything to do with that, right? We don't think that it will pay off, that learning that language is going to pay off in the long run. We think about now, we can make money now, we can make friends now, we can uh, travel and communicate now. But I think surprisingly, being bilingual or having having a bilingual brain has its benefits in terms of like delaying the onset of diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia, which are terrible diseases if you've ever met anyone or know Mm -hmm. you know what it does to to people in their old age or yeah the consequences of those diseases so being bilingual science proves that it can delay the onset of these diseases by up to five years wow so i think that's pretty pretty important Mm, right it is by the way what does that mean like you know it delays the onset of dementia Mm. or alzheimer's what is the onset in this case so the onset of something is the beginning or the starting point of something, and unpl- usually unpleasant. So, yeah, think about that. Like, you can delay having a terrible disease. Um, so, of course, it doesn't mean that it's you're not going to get Alzheimer's or you're not going to, but it can also not only decrease the possibility of you getting it, but it can decrease the symptoms and the the effects that the disease has on your body. So that's pretty important right uh you said something nice there that i wanted to ask about you said pay off in the long run what does it mean when something pays off in the long run you can think about it as like an investment think of an investment when you go and you invest money in something you don't see the rewards today it doesn't pay back today it over time maybe in 10 years five years you will receive an amount of money because of the investments that you've made today. So when something pays off in the long run, it means that you will see the rewards in the future. Not today, perhaps, but in the future, you will see the rewards of that work. Yeah. Great, great. So yeah, that is another benefit, delaying the onset of these diseases. Are there any cognitive benefits also, uh, Kelsey, to learning multiple languages? Yes, there is. So firstly, I would say that it is, I think one of the most important things is that it sort of makes you better at like switching between tasks or multitasking. You become better at sort of separating your first language and your different languages it depends how if you're learning them at the same time or at different times in your life so it becomes easier to compartmentalize your your thoughts and your ideas so you're viewing the world in one way but your brain technically has the vocabulary and the thought processes to understand the world in multiple languages so i think a great benefit is that you can separate the world into those boxes so when i'm thinking in english i'm not really the afrikaans part of my mind is sort of on pause it's it's not i'm not using it right now so i think this is a great benefit you can you can multitask and you can switch between uh focusing on one thing and filtering out irrelevant facts or information it just it's just easier um for multi or bilingual people i think another important thing is problem solving i think there's 
been multiple sort of scientific tests that show that uh, people who are bilingual are better at problem solving in many cases. So I think this is really important. Uh, one other thing that I want to point out about this is um, dopamine. So, you know, the reward center of your brain. So like when we learn a language and we become good at it, it sort of gives us a dopamine hit. Like when you realize, oh, wow, I'm I was able to communicate well. And I think <laughs> this probably happens for a lot of learners, but I think it is very um important to point this out as well because it reduces your stress levels it makes you feel good it's that feel good hormone so i think this is another benefit that shouldn't be overlooked yeah so not only is it beneficial physically speaking biologically speaking but even beneficial for your emotional health in your emotional state less stress happier anything else you can think of uh, yeah, it also strengthens the prefrontal cortex of our brains. Which apparently is the part responsible for analytical and rational thought. Exactly. So I guess uh, the main takeaway here from this research we did and from these benefits is that while being bilingual doesn't necessarily mean that you are more intelligent, it does make your brain more healthy, complex, and actively engaged. So not only... Does learning English have all those benefits for your life? Like I said in the beginning, more opportunities, a better life, but also uh, benefits in terms of health and even emotional health, as we just discussed it here. And you know, Cassie, you mentioned something about uh, multitasking and suppressing certain areas of the brain. Yeah. Uh, and actually, we're going to watch a clip today where a Harvard professor talks exactly about that. But before we do that, though, uh, I think now is the perfect moment to give a shout out to some of our followers and listeners here. So today's shout out goes to Yog or Y-O-G, who says the Real Life English app is just awesome. Just awesome. O-M-G. I'm stunned by its design. I love the way you prepare each podcast for us. It's absolutely a great app to master our English. Mm, <laughs> awesome. I like the fact Thank that uh, YOG used OMG, right? YOG <laughs> used OMG. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. In the what does it mean, by the way, <laughs> OMG, Cassie? It means, oh my gosh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, yeah, that's what it means. Just like awesome. a exclamation of like excitement or um, enthusiasm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, YOG, thank you so much for the review, for the testimonial. We really appreciate it. And dear listener, if you are listening to this podcast, not on the Real Life English app, we highly recommend you try the Real Life English app because with the app, you can listen to this week's episode with a full interactive transcript. So you can follow along and actually see and read the words that we are speaking here in this episode. Plus, you can have a four-minute conversation with anybody around the world at the touch of a button. So if you are watching us here on YouTube, I'll leave the link to the app in the description below. If you are listening to us on another podcast platform, the link will be in the show notes, or you can also go to Google Play Store, Apple App Store, search for Real Life English and download the app for, from there. I'm sure you're gonna like it. All right, Cassie, so now let's go to that video. And this video is interesting, this clip. Um, it's called Cognitive Advantages of Bilingualism from a Harvard professor named Maria Polinsky. So Maria Polinsky is a professor of linguistics at Harvard University. And we got this clip from the channel Serious Science. By the way, we'll leave the link to the channel here in the description in case you guys wanna check out the channel and watch more videos that they have. It's really interesting. But in this clip, Cassie, uh, she's talking something along the lines of what you were saying before about how bilingual people or multilingual people are able to easily suppress certain areas of the brain, let's say, on demand. And it's funny because she also gives the analogy or the example of driving, you know? So uh, apparently when we drive, we tend to do that too, right? We tend to suppress everything else that we are doing so it can keep our attention on the road. And she says that as a bilingual person, you can do the same by switching on and off between languages. 
you know? So let's check out this clip and uh, talk a little bit about that and also break down some language that she uses here. Ice-T is in the studio with us and he's gonna play the clip for us right now. Let's take a look. Likewise, when you have two languages or more represented in your brain, when you speak one, a lot of your energy and a lot of your memory resources go into suppressing the other language, which is constantly present in your cognition. And precisely because you're so experienced as a bilingual or multilingual speaker in, at suppressing the other languages in your representation, your executive control is better. And the way you exercise it way more than, let's say, a monolingual speaker does. And that leads to significant cognitive advantage. All right. Interesting, right, Cassie? Any thoughts? Any comments? Yeah, I, I think this is something that, of course, we don't think about because we have no need to think about it. It's one of those things that's sort of automatic. Like, you don't realize that you're suppressing, you know, other information while you're driving. You don't realize that you're suppressing. For example, I, I think when I hear her speak, I'm thinking about when, for example, in your case, <laughs> I imagine there are times when you're, you know, in a meeting or you're expressing an idea or thought and you don't re even realize that you're suppressing your Portuguese in order to communicate the message in English. And even right now, we're, we're both doing it right now. So I think this is something that is fascinating to think about because it's happening without us even recognizing. And I think that's the point. Over time, I think a lot of learners, sorry, I just want to get, get on this topic. I know I'm, but I, I feel like uh, a lot of learners, they're, they're in the beginning, they're always at that point of, oh, I want to be able to think, I, I'm, like, I want it to be automatic. I don't want to have to be translating in my head. And this is it. Like, when you're doing this for a long time, when you keep practicing, this is what happens. This is the the payoff, right? So it's that, like, it becomes so automatic and it's fascinating to think yeah. about. I really like the last line she says there, yeah, that, uh, you know, significant cognitive advantage you have, mm. yeah, simply by speaking more than your native mm. tongue. That's incredible. Uh, let's break down some language she uses here, Kelsey. She starts the clip by saying likewise. Because, you know, before that, just to give you some context, she gives the driving example that I just described. And then she says, likewise, when you have two languages or more, what does it mean likewise in this context? So we use the word likewise to mean in the same way. By the way, I love to teach um, that word to students as an alternative to nice to meet you too. Because a very common phrase that uh, learners learn is, hello, I'm Thiago, nice to meet you. And then the person says, nice to meet you too. But you can also say, Nice to meet you. Oh, likewise. You see, just a word, very simple, very quickly. Nice. I also I actually used that one like uh, about an hour ago. Someone oh, yeah? said, it's good to see you again, Cassie. And I said, oh, likewise. Yeah. So you don't have to repeat the greeting. You can just simply respond. There you go. Yeah. Much good more point. practical communication yeah. there. About connected speech, uh, there is this segment here in the clip, which goes a lot of your energy and a lot of your memory. A lot of your energy and a lot of your memory resources. This is a common connection we have here. So the T, the final T for lot, sounds like a flap T sound. It's a da da, da da. And then we connect that with the preposition of. So a lot of, a lot of, a lot of. So it's this da, da. The, the article A before lot also has the schwa sound here. So we say a, uh, a, uh, a lot, a lot, and then a lot of a lot of. So a lot of your energy and a lot of your memory. It's also important to point out that the F for the preposition of here sounds like a V. Of. Of. So we say of your energy. Of your memory. All right? She says something interesting also here. She says go, uh, um, a lot of your memory resources go into suppressing the other language. And a little bit ahead, she also says that bilingual or multilingual speakers, they are good at suppressing the other languages. Notice that in these two instances here, we have a preposition, into and at, and after we have a verb, the verb suppress. Now, a grammar rule here that is important to point out is if you have a preposition and a verb right after the preposition, the verb is in the ing form, 
we use the verb in the ing. So that's why we say into suppressing and not into suppress or at suppressing and not at suppress. All right. Just to give another example, let's say I am good at playing guitar. You see at preposition playing verb in the ing. By the way, Kasa, we are using this word a lot here. What does it mean to suppress? So to suppress something means to sort of hold it back or to stop something from happening. Or, for example, if you want to cry, you're feeling really emotional while watching a movie, you could suppress your tears, which means to sort of hold them back and prevent them from <laughs> flowing. Or if someone tells a joke and it's an inappropriate one, you might want to suppress your laughter. So you're like, which means you prevent yourself from laughing. So think about it as you know, stopping <laughs> something from happening. I just want to point out that you just used the rule that I just explained about preposition and verb. <laughs> you said prevent from flowing. You see, from is a preposition and flow is a mm -hmm. verb. From flowing, yeah. from laughing. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Um, she also says in the clip here that um, your executive control is better. Uh, executive control is a kind of a term that they use uh, in neuroscience to relate to different cognitive abilities that we have. For example, your working memory, attentional control, planning, reasoning, problem solving. So all these are examples of executive control. So what she's saying here is that bilingual or multilingual people have better executive control, better cognitive abilities, uh, in other words. And finally, Kelsey, she says, and that leads to significant cognitive advantage. What does it mean when something mm -hmm. leads to something else? So when one thing leads to another thing, it means that this is sort of, this causes this, or this results in this happening. So for example, studying every day could lead to you acing the test, or exercising every day could lead to you becoming fit and healthy, or will most likely lead to you being fit and healthy. So uh, yeah, think of it, one thing resulting in another thing. And also lead, I think there's a, a mental picture that it, it draws for me. So it doesn't happen immediately. If one thing, if someone leads, they're taking you sort of on a journey, they're, they're you know, taking you somewhere to a destination. So one thing will result in another thing over time. Awesome. So now we've come to the big challenge of the day. And actually, the big challenge is a question that we have for you guys today. Aside from English, what other language would you like to learn? Leave us a comment on YouTube if you are watching us here on YouTube, or if you are listening to us someplace else, you can simply send us an email at hello at reallifeglobal.com. Chiago, like I think uh, the viewers should definitely also tell us why. Don't only tell us which language, but tell us why mm. you think that would be an awesome language to learn. So that yeah, include the why. Yeah, that is a great <laughs> addition. Thank you so much, Cassie. So what other language would you like to learn and why? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be a little, go a little bit deeper. Yeah. In our deeper. response. Yeah. Thank you, Cassie. That's awesome. Um, before we conclude today's episode, we have here a comment that was left on our YouTube channel on episode 336. That In that episode, Ethan and I talk about how to learn new words from movies and series. And in that episode, I pretty much break down my personal step-by-step -step method that I used to improve my English with movies and series. And we have here a comment from a viewer, and I think it's actually a question. And let me read the, the comment right here. I think it's uh, Jazur or Yazur. And uh, the comment goes, Hi, thank you for your useful podcasts. I listen to your podcasts every day, and I think that they help me improve my listening skills. I have one question. Is it good to listen to podcasts rather than watching movies? Which one is more useful to our listening? Hmm. Would you like to answer this one, Cassie? What would you say to this viewer? Um, okay, so I would say it depends I think everything should be put, everything can be, it's different for every person. So I think it depends on what works for you. I think for some people, seeing and listening at the same time is so much more beneficial. Looking at the context, looking at, you know, 
if you're that kind of audio visual type of learner, if you're more of a auditory person, you might get more benefit of, you know, focusing only on the words, listening to the sounds. Um, you know, it's, it's a lot slower, I think. Not that the conversation on the podcast is slow, but you can go back more easily, listen to that part again. It's usually shorter than, I mean, depending, uh, than watching a, a TV show. So I, I think this is very uh, subjective. Uh, but I, I think they both have, have benefits and they can both be very useful. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, they're both <laughs> great. So I would recommend use both. Maybe you have a seven day week. Maybe use a couple of days to work with movies and series and then another day mm. or a couple of more days with podcasts. But mm. they are great for different reasons. Both of them. Yeah. All right. Vary your uh, your exercises so that you you don't just, as Chiago said, just, you know, listening to podcasts every day can get boring. So maybe mm -hmm. switch it up, let's watch a movie or a series and there just you go. switch it up. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Casa, it was wonderful to have you here again and to do another podcast with you. I really enjoyed it. It's always and, a pleasure. <laughs> uh, did you, do you have any final words for the listeners today? Yeah, I, I think that like, um, you know, this is such an important topic to talk about. And I think people don't realize that there's more t more benefits than just I could get the job or I could make some friends. It's so much bigger than that. Um, you know, it, it improves your empathy. As we said, your um, the reward center, you're getting that dopamine hit every time you get things correct and you're you're using this language. And the good thing is it never ends. You're learning uh, and the dopamine hit never ends. So every time you progress in your language learning, you're actually just strengthening your um, reward center. You're going like, yes, I just did that. You're achieving. And it's it's amazing. It's fantastic. So awesome. keep going, guys. <laughs> yeah. Great way to end today's podcast. And uh, dear listeners, thank you so much for listening to this podcast or for watching us here on YouTube. We really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for next week's episode, which is going to be full of nice and cool stuff as well. And we'll see you soon. One, two, three. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and today we're talking about a hot topic, not not a sexy topic, a hot topic as in a popular topic, because it's uh, something that we hear all the time from learners is that they understand really well, but then when they get the opportunity to speak to someone, maybe they're they're traveling, maybe they're using the Real Life English app and they're you know put in a, connected to someone in another part of the world for a conversation, for example, and they just go blank or they're paralyzed or, you know, all the words that they know are in their brain, they just don't come out of their mouth. There's all these sorts of different things that can happen, right? So it's really frustrating feeling because you're, you feel like your English is at a certain level because you have this confidence.